It seems the five-year battle over Robin Thicke's biggest hit, Blurred Lines, has come to an end. The family of Marvin Gaye has been awarded a win in the most recent appeal case. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals sided with the soul singer's estate, citing that his 1977 song, Got to Give It Up, was entitled to broad copyright protection because musical compositions are not confined to a narrow range of expression. His track was infringed by Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke's hit, which lifted portions of the melody and instrumentation. Naturally, this comes with a heavy consequence. Skateboard P and Robin Thicke will have to pay 50% of all royalties for the rest of their lives to the estate of Marvin Gaye. Luckily, T.I. wasn't included in the ruling, but this does raise the question, what happens to musicians and their samples and interpolations moving forward? What was the biggest hit of 2013 now has the hit makers giving it up? But what do you think? I'm Adam Ford with the Morgan Minute. What's going on, y'all? It's Adam Ford with the Morgan Minute, where we give you stories that matter in 60 seconds. Winnie Mandela, the former anti-apartheid activist and wife of Nelson Mandela, passed away earlier this week in Johannesburg, South Africa. She was 81. She fought valiantly against the apartheid state and sacrificed her life for the freedom of her country, said Victor Dalmini, the family spokesperson. She kept the memory of her imprisoned husband Nelson Mandela alive during his years on Robben Island and helped give the struggle for justice in South Africa one of its most recognizable faces. Born Nam Zamo Winifred Zaniwe Mari Kizela, she married Nelson Mandela in 1958. After his release from prison, Nelson Mandela went on to become the first democratically elected leader of South Africa in 1994. Thank you, Winnie Mandela, for all your years of service. I'm Adam Ford with the Morgan Minute. What's going on, y'all? It's Adam Ford with the Morgan Minute, where we give you stories that matter in 60 seconds. Did you know there was a time you had to actually call to book movie tickets? Crazy, right? Smartphones changed all of that. And now, a new deal with the MoviePass app and the old brand movie phone are bridging the gap between old and new. And if you didn't know, MoviePass is the popular app where you pay $9.99 a month to be able to see a movie a day at participating theaters. It's an irresistible deal for young adults, and the purchase of the once giant movie phone is hoping to bring Groupon-like bonuses and more to the app. In any event, MoviePass plans to dominate the movie theater industry with this business move. Now's a great time to invest if you're a young adult. I'm Adam Ford reporting with the Morgan Minute. Add another win for hip hop culture. Kendrick Lamar's last album, Damn, is receiving a Pulitzer Prize. It's the first time work outside of jazz and classical genres has been recognized in that category. In the Monday announcement, Pulitzer Board described the album as a virtuosic song collection unified by its vernacular authenticity and rhythmic dynamism that offers affecting vignettes capturing the complexity of modern African American life. Damn, released on April 14, 2017, is Kendrick Lamar's fourth studio album. It won the Grammy for Best Rap Album and was among the nominees for Album of the Year. You gotta give props to the damn MC. Respect, brother. This is Adam Ford reporting for the Morgan Minute. Colin Kaepernick has won Amnesty International's highest honor. The NFL exiled human rights activist has won the 2018 Ambassador of Conscience Award. Past winners of the organization's highest award also include former South African President Nelson Mandela, Malala Yousafzai, the education activist from Pakistan who survived an assassination attempt by the Taliban, and rock group U2. The organization recognized Kaepernick for his protests against police violence. His action, kneeling during the national anthem before NFL games, sparked a movement duplicated across America and the world, starting a debate about free speech and patriotism that was inflamed by the President of the United States, one of Kaepernick's most relentless critics. It'll be interesting to see how organizations such as the NFL acknowledge Kaepernick's absence in light of his accomplishments and demonstrated desire to play football. I'm Adam Ford reporting for the Morgan Minute.